Hi guys, welcome to the second of the production of materials videos. Um, this particular one today is going to look at the process of cracking, specifically catalytic cracking, although we will also briefly touch on thermal cracking as well. The whole problem that we have is that when we look at a barrel of crude oil, the composition is not, generally speaking, what we want it to be economically. We often have too many of the longer chain hydrocarbons and too few of the short ones. The short chain hydrocarbons include things like ethene, which I talked about in the previous video, as, as a particularly good starting material for the production of many different types of products. So if we don't have enough of these short chains, we need to do something to try and increase the yield or increase the proportion that we have. One way of doing this is to crack the larger fractions down into smaller fractions. So to take some of the very big molecules that we get out of a barrel of crude oil and to um, cut them up effectively into smaller fractions. This is known as cracking. So cracking is simply the process by which large carbon molecules are cracked into smaller chains. And the process happens through either the use of a catalyst or with the use of heat. In the process of catalytic cracking, we use a catalyst which is known as a zeolite. So that is our catalyst. And it has a structure similar to this one that you see on the right of the slide. These zeolites provide a surface area for the <clears throat> larger molecules to be broken down into smaller molecules. And that increase in surface area increases the possibility of large molecules being able to be broken down in this way. During the process of catalytic cracking, we find a large molecule like a carbon-15 molecule being cracked into smaller ones. In this case, say, a carbon-10 and a carbon-5. Now notice the ratio here is if we call the 15N, then the H is 2N plus 2. So this is an alkane. The same ratio occurs for the decane. So this is 2N plus 2, which is decane. But the ratio for our second compound is um, N to 2N. So this must be pentene. We'll call it 1N just for the sake of the argument today, but of course there will be isomers. Um, but pentuanine. So when we crack our long chain hydrocarbon using the zeolite catalyst, we get an alkane and an alkene. And this is going to be very important um, for some of the questions that we look at later on. The larger molecules can be further cracked. So in this case, our uh, pentuanine is being broken down into ethene and uh, prop, oh, again, we'll call it what, prop 1 -ene. Okay, so again, the ratios here are 1 to 2, 1 to 2, so we know these are alkenes. It's important to make sure that you are keeping in mind the difference between an alkane and an alkene, both in terms of the single and double bonds and also the ratio of carbons to hydrogens in these molecules. We're going to have a look at uh, the reaction that helps us to distinguish between each of those um, in class. So the important thing about the catalytic cracking process is the use of the zeolite catalyst. The larger chain molecules are becoming smaller chains. The other type of cracking is thermal cracking. So thermal cracking is obviously going to involve the use of heat. Thermal cracking does the same thing as catalytic cracking, that is, it's used to break up larger hydrocarbons into small ones. But rather than using a catalyst, thermal cracking uses steam and high heat. And this addition of uh, both these two, steam and heat, allows the cracking of fractions from large molecules, um, such as a 11 carbon chain, into much smaller ones. So here you can see we've got four molecules of ethene 
and a prop one in and um, and a hydrogen so different conditions for catalytic cracking and thermal cracking and some differences in the products as a result of each of these two processes so we have a question this question came from the 2008 HSE paper. It was question 16A, so there was a second part to this question, but this one was worth two marks. The process of fractional distillation used, is used to separate crude oil into different fractions. One of the compounds obtained from fractional distillation is decane. C10 H22 is decane. This compound undergoes catalytic cracking as shown in the process in the formula or equation below. So here are our two products. We need to identify these products and the homologous series to which they belong. Well, the first of these products is an eight carbon, so it must be an oct. And because they're, the ratio of carbon to hydrogen is um, CnH2n plus 2. This must be an alkane. So therefore, the first one is octane. The second compound, C2H4, is in the form CnH2n. So it must be an ene. Because it's two carbons, it's eth, and then the ending is ene. So that's the identification of the products. What about the homologous series? Well, the homologous series just is the same group to which they belong. So octane belongs to the alkanes and ethene belongs to the alkenes. How did you go?